Yo guys, I'm HP, this is Dr. Pink, and today's topic is Mojo Blues Guitar. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe to my channel, hit the notification button, and please join the HP Crazy Guitar Academy with a free member account or a premium member account if you want to support the work which Dr. Pink and me are doing for you. So what are we talking about? Well, let's, me let's let music talk. Probably you know this is only drum and bass on the backing track, so we're doing the mojo all on the guitar. And um, yeah, let's get started with that one. I'm using a really simple sound here. I'm using just a simple uh, tube, uh, tube black star uh, tube head with a crunchy setting, bluesy setting, some reverb, and that's it. And the rest is all created on the fretboard and by your technique. And it's a blues in E, so we're using some uh, open strings and stuff, but let's check it out. Let's first check out the main riff which I played, this one here. This one here. Um, it looks like there's nothing happening here, but in fact a lot of things are happening here and we have to need to check it out. If you're playing an E5, chord using palm muted technique so one and two so one and two one and two and three and four so we're using the palm muted technique and we're playing the chords we release the palm muting with, with the rotation of the hand see so that's one of the difficult parts. The second one is the, the count. So one and two and three and four and. That's figure number one. It's a two bar figure. First figure is easy. One and two and three and four and. And then second bar. Ooh. So it starts the same and then goes. That one is a little bit tricky, so... So, one and two and three. We go up to A5 and then hammer open e st uh, G string. Then this little um, trailer. And then we go in the lettering of E5 again. It's a little bit tricky if you want to play it in really in a nice row. Uh, one and so that is the main riff, okay? That is played. Um, uh, the second time you played, you can leave. You just play the second part of the riff like this. Just play this without the figure. You can also, or you can do the other figure as you wish. It's just as an option, but um, I will do the whole, I will do the whole thing. Then it goes to A, 
Same thing in A. Literally the same thing with A5, but now the figure is up here. Here from 5, and then we end up here on 7 5 pull off. And then we go back to E. So let's play this now quickly. One, two, three. I forgot when we when you change to A instead of doing this A5 you you just stay on E5 because the A5 would not sound so well or you play the whole figure. And the ending is really simple then we go to B5 Really simple, same technique. And then ending. Then we just stay on E5, do the polyrhythmic technique. One and two and three and four and one and two and on two and switch to B5. One and two and three and four and one, two and three. That's the whole thing. Um, it doesn't have to be exactly like this, but it's basically the technique to get give this whole thing that drive. Okay, I'm gonna play it now. One, two, three, four. made a mistake on the B is so one one and two three and four and so one and two three and four and one two three and four and okay so that's the main figure I just played it's really groovy and the problem is you really have to be precise because it's only drum and bass. So if you miss something and also the <laughs> that you get this position to get into this lead ring figure. Okay. Good. Now let's check out the improvisation. So you can use this Mojo blues guitar riff as a main riff, and then we go to improvisation. It's a normal blues in E, more or less normal. And now, since we only have drum and bass, you have to do more. You cannot just play, you know, you can, you use chords. And I'll show you chords for E, E9 here, seven, six, seven, seven. And this one is for A. Four, four, five, five, and for B. So let's play the whole thing just with these chords and using some um, pentatonic here in, in between, here just in the position number three. Because this position here, because we are here in the, it's in the reach of the chords. So let's see how that works out.
just laid it down mit Glad Records. What I did now, <coughs> a first chorus, I played the chords and somehow implemented the chords into the ear of the listener. Then, second row, you can keep it empty and let the sound of the bass and the drum come through. You uh, need to interact with the band, not just cover the bass and drum. It's, <coughs> it's not a, I mean, of course it's a backing track. Well, I play the bass, but it's a backing track. <coughs> but interact with the music, listen what the drum and bass is doing and then you just I mean you know this stuff is really simple to play just a few notes but to feel where the notes come that's the hard part of it and try to really dive into the music just with this simple stuff you can also use the time to make this tremolo effect by pressing against the guitar and making tremolo <laughs> and I always tell to my students you need to dive into the tone, you need to live in the tone if you live in the tone you start feeling what you need to play you know and that's what it's all about, it's not about many notes, especially in blues and in this type of let the whole thing breathe and just play a few notes. That's the key to success. success. One, two. Also make variations on the rhythm. You also don't need to stay here. also can do is uh, change the position then when you go up here and play the e, the e up here will be like this that will be e if you play a it's this and b is here same um, voicings just b if you want to go along with the melody and play the chords in the in the near region of what you just sold that also works okay so, I'm building up the whole thing now, first playing the riff, which I sh showed at the beginning, then we go into the improvisation, first slow, we're just laying down chords, then more, and at the end you play the riff again. Uh, it's going to be three chorus, so be a little bit patient, I just watch and get some inspiration how you can manage this whole thing. And <coughs> as I said, it's n it's not so much about licks, you know, it's about feeling the thing, understanding and diving into the music, okay? First the riff.
and so on. See, now I really, I, the main thing is let music breathe. You have a main riff, which is the key, which is the theme through the song, and you have a main vibe which you want to create inside a song, okay? When you play music, like on an advanced level, this is considered blues advanced, even it's not so hard to play, but the advanced thing of this is now to create a theme and the mood over four chorus, you know? I mean, the chords are easy to grab. The soloing was also simple. You can do that. Most of you can do that. The riff might be a bit tricky until you have this here. That's the tricky part, but the rest is also not so hard to play. But <coughs> to get the vibe and exact the right note at the right spot. And also maybe sometimes having two bars of no music that's the advanced thing um you need to explore it's and this is a, a thing which you cannot you know you don't need to practice technical stuff for that but as my teacher always said you need to live in the tone and I, I never understood what he meant with that when i having lessons with him so what the fuck what the, what the, what the beep is he talking about <laughs> took me a while till i got it you really dive into the tone and you just live there and then feel when the next tone shall come. It's about hearing the music, it's about feeling the music and not so much about licks, you know. Sometimes, uh, you know, YouTube, YouTube is often a source to learn licks, but honestly, playing music has nothing to do with licks. It's good to learn licks, to have a certain <coughs> flexibility here and a certain ideas, but when it comes to get the moment, of playing that you pick up the vibe of the moment and blues is really cool for that because blues is always different sometimes you're more bluesy than on another day you play different than on another day if you play blues the same way th all the time then you're not playing blues because then you're just repeating what you learned and if you d that's the difference within which you need to understand if you want to get to the next step of um, playing blues and that's why this is considered an advanced tutorial. Even the stuff is technically not so hard to play. Yo, one more to say. If you want to download the tabs of the riff, plus this cool backing track, just drum and bass, it's available in the HP Crazy Guitar Academy. Please join there with the free member account to join our guitar community. There will be a lot of cool possibility there to find the tutorials which you need for your purpose, but also if you want to download the stuff, you find the, the files there, but that's only available for premium members. But with the premium membership, you also support the whole thing which me and Dr. Pink are offering to you guys. Go. Cool. Yeah. There's a fan t-shirt out now. If you want to have a t-shirt, find the link in the description box below. All my students, my live students have a t-shirt. So if you are a, are a student, you probably also want to have one. Link is in the description box below. Good. Me and Dr. Pink are saying bye and see you next time. <laughs>